Wplasty is a scar revision technique that's utilized to camouflage scars that are not parallel to relaxed skin tension lines. We use a geometric broken line closure when we have hypertrophic scars that are parallel to the relaxed skin tension lines. So here in this example, we're using a Wplasty. And again, the peaks and valleys are such that the peak on one side corresponds to the valley on the opposite side. The limbs of these uh, W plasty should not be any greater than 5 to 7 millimeters in length. The angles you can see are uh, not less than 90 degrees. They're broader than 90 degrees usually, or at least 90 degrees. Now we're dissecting uh, the uh, W plasty. Uh, by now elevating the skin that's going to be uh, removed, which would be the site of the scar. This is a little bit broader than we would use in the human because of the thickness and toughness of the pig skin. Undermining continues actually to remove the scar. And again, Wplasty is used to camouflage a scar not parallel to relaxed skin tension lines. Now the scar has been removed. You can see the area of the scar. And now the tissues are well undermined. Again, either a 15 blade or a dissection scissors may be used with the tips pointed upward so that you don't interfere with the underlying uh, vasculature and then have to obtain hemostasis. Now, Finger pressure is used to make sure that it can be closed easily. Deep sutures may be placed when necessary. And it's usually uh, best to use deep sutures with a long-lasting life uh, so that they are in position for a long time. Uh, then eventually they may uh, dissolve. This will allow the deeper tissues to be closed and keep the tension off the skin sutures. Here the sutures are uh, interrupted again from a valley to a peak or from a peak to a valley at the apex. The corner stitches may be used. Here's an example of a corner stitch uh, being used at this site into the dermis to prevent tip necrosis. They are not necessary in every case. And now the second throw is through the skin and the suture is then tied down to close the uh, wound. Instrument tie certainly may be used or a hand tie may be used. Always use uh, square knots. Now we have an example of the rhombic flap or rhomboid flap on a pig's foot. Uh, the uh, limbs of the uh, flap are um, of equal length. And the angles are, again, 60 degrees and 120 degrees. The lesion is now excised by utilizing a 15 blade and then picking up the edge of the lesion and now dissecting it free with a number 15 blade down to the subcutaneous tissues. Notice also the other limbs of the flap are the same length as the parallelogram uh, of the rhomboid flap. The angles are approximately 120 degrees and 60 degrees, and that's how the other limb of the flap uh, is fashioned. And now the incision is made along the superior limb, and now at an angle of approximately 60 degrees, the second incision is made, mobilizing the flap now with a pair of dissection scissors with the tips up. Again, you may use a 15 blade or uh, dissection scissors. Be sure to widely undermine this uh, tissue. And again, the tissue may be undermined using scissors or a 15 blade. You want it widely undermined so that the flap will be rotated into position so that it is not under any extreme tension. Notice the wide undermining in this particular case. Once the flap is and adjacent tissues are widely undermined, then the flap is rotated into position. With the point of maximal tension uh, of the flap uh, here uh, is seen with the uh, first suture, all apices of the flap are then sewn 
Here is the first suture at the point of maximal tension. It is at a corner. A corner stitch is not necessarily needed in every case, but you can see how nicely this flap is rotated into position to cover a defect. Now the second suture is placed in again at the apex of the flap, and again it's possible to use a corner stitch if you wish, but in this particular example we use just a direct uh, interrupted suture technique. And the third apex is now approximated. Deep sutures, if necessary, certainly can be utilized uh, when indicated after adequate hemostasis is obtained. And once all these corner stitches are uh, put into position, then the wound is closed according to the uh, principles of having. The rotation flap is utilized to close a triangular defect. The rotation flap follows a smooth curve from the site of the defect. It then gets rotated into place. Typically, the limb of the rotation is approximately two to four times longer than the axis of the defect that it needs to close. This is a flap with a very large vascular pedicle, and it is extremely useful for facial reconstruction. Because the skin edges have already been incised, the defect can be completely excised with scissors. The flap is then incised with a knife, broadly undermined under the entire flap, as well as one to two centimeters beyond the skin edges of the defect. Test rotation can be done intermittently during flap elevation to determine whether the back cut is enough. The key suture is then placed. An instrument tie can be used with this flap design because there is not a significant degree of tension. The flap edge is then closed to the longer skin edge using the principles of halving, splitting each side in half for subsequent suture placement. Here we see the defect, an incision is being made around the defect, and then the limbs of the note flap will be created by making a line uh, as a tangent approximately uh, one and a half times the length of the diameter. Here we see the uh, lesion being excised. Uh, once this lesion is removed, the other limbs of the uh, note flap are drawn. There's the first limb. It's approximately one and a half times the diameter at approximately um, as a tangent. And the second limb is now cut. That is the lead diameter uh, of the um, lesion at approximately 60 degree angle. Now the dissection begins at the apex, at the 60 degree angle apex. Uh, and it is widely undermined so that the flap can be rotated into the circular defect to close that circular defect. We will have some uh, excess tissue at the apex of the flap uh, that needs to be trimmed. Now, the first suture is being placed, uh, as we see in this example, from uh, the apex of the flap, from the tangent of the uh, circular defect. That's the point of uh, maximal uh, tension. The second suture is now placed. It's placed uh, at uh, the flap as it's being rotated into position. Uh, notice this is a triangle being rotated into a circular uh, defect. So we need to be able to trim the excess of that flap so as it fits and it will inset nicely into the circular defect. Here we see the uh, dog ear. So we place a suture uh, to close this end of the flap, uh, placing it in position. We can see the dog ear has now been created. Um, we will remove that by making the back cut and then uh, sewing that into position. Here we're now closing the uh, remainder of the uh, flap. Uh, you can see there's a triangular excess 
which will need to be trimmed and um, inset uh, properly. And again, another suture is placed at the apex um, of the uh, tissue so that uh, all limbs of the defect are closed. And the remainder of the tissues are closed according to the principles of having. Now we can see uh, that there is this excess. We now will cut uh, this triangular excess off so that the flap will inset nicely uh, into the uh, region of the defect. This can be trimmed off with either a pair of scissors or with a 15 blade. And now the final stitch uh, is put into position to close the uh, wound and the flap is now nicely in position, uh, closing the defect. Here we have the dog ear. A hook is placed. Uh, the line of the back cut is marked. Always place the hook at the apex of the dog ear and always cut away from the flap. So you do not want to interfere with the blood supply. The uh, back cut is now made. Uh, we can see uh, using the hook that we have uh, excess, and this excess is now trimmed off, removing the dog ear and allowing the flap to inset nicely into the area of the defect. This is a uh, relatively uh, fast and easy technique to remove the dog ear. And now the sutures, uh, one or two may be placed depending upon the amount of tissue that needs to be closed. Uh, the sutures are now placed to complete the closure of the wound. Here we see the uh, excision of the circular defect and the closure with the note flap. The advancement flap is drawn so that the length is approximately two and a half to three times longer than the width. Care is taken to stay in the subcutaneous plane during the excision of the lesion. Countertraction is helpful during incision and excision. The scissors can be used to undermine as well as to cut the deep layers of the soft tissues. The skin incisions themselves should be made with a sharp knife. Care is taken to incise perpendicular to the skin edges. Again, the entire flap is undermined in a layer between the skin and the deeper subcutaneous tissues. Undermining is continued beyond the extent of the dissection by 1 to 2 centimeters in all directions. This allows for easier flap mobility. The first suture is placed in the center of the flap and out the central aspect of the defect. This is tied with a hand tie and a surgeon's knot to prevent slipping of the knot. By keeping constant tension on the sutures, one can prevent tying an air knot. The suture is cut with a small tail. That prevents unwinding of the suture material over time. The corner sutures are placed next, since they are the other primary sites of tension in this flap design. Here an instrument tie is being utilized for the corner stitch. Again, a surgeon's knot is put down on the first row. And now we have a problem of unequal skin edge length. The skin edge is longer than the flap edge. We will then close this with the principles of having. The first or central suture is placed in the middle of the inferior edge of the flap and in the middle of the corresponding skin flap. The two halves on either side are still uneven, but less so. Subsequent sutures are then placed so that it splits the difference between the previous sutures until enough sutures are placed for adequate closure. In this way, the redundant skin of the lower flap is spread evenly across the entire wound closure and results in a smooth wound edge. On the upper flap, we have closed it so that the skin is closed in an even manner, resulting in a standing cone deformity at the inferior aspect of the flap. The standing cone deformity excision is always done away from the flap pedicle. A single hook is placed in the dog ear, and the triangle that is formed can easily be seen. It is then marked with a surgical marking pen. An incision is made perpendicular to the skin edge so that we can mark out the point of a triangle. 
Undermining is done under this dog ear deformity. The skin is transposed back until one can exactly see how much skin is needed to be trimmed. The skin is then trimmed and the flap is inset. This flap is then sutured into place and the dog ear deformity is resolved. The fusiform excision is marked with a length of one and a half to three times the width. The intervening skin and soft tissue is then excised. The incision made in the skin edge should be perpendicular to that skin edge. The fusiform to be excised can then be removed with sharp dissection using either knife or scissor. The skin to be excised can be held with a forceps or a skin hook. The middle finger can also be used to aid in the retraction of the soft tissue during the dissection. In order to allow the tissues to come together during the closure, undermining is necessary. When scissor dissection is used, the tips of the scissors are best kept tip upwards towards the skin edge so that the deep structures are not inadvertently cut. A number 15 blade can also be used to continue the undermining. This demonstrates that either a scissor or a number 15 blade can be used to undermine the soft tissues which will allow closure without tension. The first suture that is placed is a deep suture and it is buried. It is placed in the dermis at approximately the mid portion of the incision according to the principles of having. A surgeon's knot is used to close the deep tissues thereby approximating the wound edges. Notice how the wound edges come together. The deep suture is cut on the knot and the wound edges are now well approximated. A second deep suture is placed according to the principles of having, midway between the first central suture and the end of the long axis of the wound. Again, an instrument tie is used to fashion the square knot. Four throws are used to be sure that the knot is secure. Skin sutures are then placed according to the principles of having. The first or central suture is placed midway between the long axis of the wound. Note that the edges of the wound are both approximated and everted. The skin suture is cut with a tail. The remainder of the skin sutures are also placed according to the principles of having.